The 22nd of June, 1941. Under the codename Operation Barbarossa, Nazi Germany launches a surprise invasion of the Soviet Union, its ally in the war against Poland. The Soviet Union sees catastrophic military losses in the first six weeks after the German attack. And by the end of September, the great Russian cities of Leningrad and Moscow are under siege. However, Russia's greatest ally, the Winter, arrives, and the Germans are stopped. In the summer of 1942, Germany resumes the offensive with a massive attack, and on the 23rd of August of the same year, the German 6th Army reaches the outskirts of Stalingrad. In mid-November 1942, Soviet forces launch a counter-offensive against the Germans arrayed at Stalingrad and quickly encircle an entire German army, numbering more than 220,000 soldiers. On the 2nd of February 1943, the German 6th Army, after five months of fierce fighting and heavy casualties, having exhausted their ammunition and food, finally capitulates, making it the first of Hitler's field armies to surrender during World War II. Weakened by disease, starvation, and lack of medical care during the encirclement, they are sent on foot marches to prisoner camps and later to labor camps all over the Soviet Union. Most of them would die of wounds, disease, cold, overwork, mistreatment, and malnutrition. Their commander is Field Marshal Friedrich Paulus. Friedrich Paulus was born on the 23rd of September 1890 in Gugshagen, then part of the German Empire. While his father was an accountant, Friedrich wanted to become an officer in the Imperial German Navy. Because he was rejected, Paulus briefly studied law at Marburg University, which he left after one semester. In February 1910, he joined the 111th Infantry Regiment as an officer cadet, and two years later, in 1912, he married the Romanian noblewoman Constance Elena Rosetti Solescu, the sister of a regiment comrade. The marriage produced three children, one daughter and two sons. The First World War began on the 28th of July, 1914. Paulus fought in Serbia and Romania, as well as on the Western Front in France, where he took part in the Battle of Verdun, which was fought from the 21st of February to the 18th of December, 1916. It was one of the longest and deadliest battles of the war. The German army attempted an offensive near the French city of Verdun that quickly devolved into a stalemate. German forces were subsequently diverted from Verdun when the British launched the Battle of the Somme, and the Battle of Verdun ended in December when the French recaptured the initial German gains. About 300,000 soldiers were killed, and many more were wounded. By the end of the war, Friedrich Paulus was a captain and was awarded the Iron Cross, first and second class. The First World War ended on the 11th of November, 1918 when the German leaders signed the armistice in the Compiègne Forest in France. The introduction of new weapons like the machine gun and gas warfare led to enormous losses, and the war claimed the lives of 10 million soldiers. Property and industry losses were catastrophic. As a result, the victorious powers imposed a series of treaties upon the defeated powers. Among the treaties, the 1919 Treaty of Versailles held Germany responsible for starting the war and liable for massive material damages. The treaty imposed harsh penalties on the Germans, including the loss of 13% of its pre-war territories, extensive reparation payments, and the demilitarization of the Rhineland. In the new Weimar Republic, which was the government of Germany from 1918 to 1933, Friedrich Paulus was a brigade adjutant with a paramilitary Freikorps unit. In the aftermath of World War I and during the German Revolution of 1918 to 1919, Freikorps, consisting largely of World War I veterans, were raised as paramilitary militias. They were ostensibly mustered to fight on behalf of the government against the communists attempting to overthrow the Weimar Republic. Freikorps acted with particular brutality and violence, and many of its units proved to be rebellious and difficult for the German government and military to control. Paulus was chosen as one of only 4,000 officers to serve the Reichswehr, the German army, which the Treaty of Versailles had limited to 100,000 men. He served in various staff positions and also worked as a tactics teacher, and in this function he drew attention to himself with his operational talent. In February 1931, he was transferred to the war school in Berlin and promoted to major. As a course leader for tactics and war history, he was employed in officer training. Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party came into power in January 1933. 
Between 1934 and 1935, Paulus briefly commanded a motorized battalion before being named Chief of Staff for Wehrmacht Panzer Troops Command in October 1935. This was a new formation under the direction of Oswald Lutz that directed the training and development of the Panzerwaffe or tank forces of the German army. In May 1939, Paulus was promoted to Major General and became Chief of Staff for the German 10th Army, with which he took part in the invasion of Poland, which began on the 1st of September 1939 and marked the beginning of the Second World War. The campaign in Poland ended on the 6th of October the same year, with Germany and the Soviet Union dividing and annexing the whole of the country. After the victory over Poland, the German 10th Army was renamed the 6th Army. Nazi Germany possessed overwhelming military superiority over Poland. Germany launched the unprovoked attack with an advanced force consisting of more than 2,000 tanks, supported by nearly 900 bombers and over 400 fighter planes. In all, Germany deployed 60 divisions and nearly 1.5 million men in the invasion. The Panzer divisions were vital to the German army's early success. In the strategies of the Blitzkrieg, the Wehrmacht combined the mobility of light tanks with airborne assault to quickly progress through the weak enemy lines, which enabled the German army to take over Poland and later France. These tanks were used to break through enemy lines, isolating regiments from the main force so that the infantry behind the tanks could quickly kill or capture the enemy troops. The German invasion of France, Belgium, Luxembourg and the Netherlands started on the 10th of May 1940 and became known as the Battle of France. These countries, along with France, were conquered within six weeks. During the invasion of the Low Countries, the 6th Army saw active service linking up with paratroopers and destroying fortifications during the Battle of Belgium. The 6th Army was involved in the breakthrough of the Paris defences on the 12th of June 1940, before acting as a northern flank for German forces along the Normandy coast during the closing stages of the Battle of France. In the great wave of promotions that followed the fall of France in June 1940, Paulus was promoted to Lieutenant General in August 1940. The following month, he was named Deputy Chief of the German General Staff. In that role, he helped draft the plans for the invasion of the Soviet Union. At this point, the first operational studies for the invasion of the Soviet Union, which became known as Operation Barbarossa, were already available. Paulus took over the detailed elaboration of the operational procedure and recognized the need for rapid advance, aimed at capturing Moscow. In his opinion, in order to be able to defeat the Soviet Union quickly, it was necessary to advance with fast armored formations and to prevent powerful enemy formations from withdrawing into the vastness of the area. In the event that this plan did not succeed, the general staff foresaw a long war that the Wehrmacht would hardly have been able to cope with. Hitler received the final military plans for the invasion on the 5th of December 1940, and on the 18th of December, upon reviewing these plans, the Führer formally committed Germany to the invasion when he issued Führer Directive 21, where he outlined the precise manner in which the operation was to be carried out. The Barbarossa Decree, issued by Hitler on the 30th of March 1941, supplemented the directive by decreeing that the war against the Soviet Union would be one of annihilation and legally sanctioned the eradication of all communist political leaders and intellectual elites in Eastern Europe. The invasion was tentatively set for May 1941, but it was delayed for over a month to allow for further preparations and possibly better weather. Although Hitler was warned by many high-ranking military officers, including Friedrich Paulus, that occupying Western Russia would create more of a drain than a relief for Germany's economic situation, he anticipated compensatory benefits such as demobilization of entire divisions to relieve the acute labor shortage in German industry, the exploitation of Ukraine as a reliable and immense source of agricultural products, the use of forced labor to stimulate Germany's overall economy, and the expansion of territory to improve Germany's efforts to isolate the United Kingdom. Hitler was further convinced that Britain would sue for peace once the Germans triumphed in the Soviet Union, and if they did not, he would use the resources gained in the East to defeat the British Empire. Operation Barbarossa began on Sunday, the 22nd of June, 1941. After the initial great successes by the German troops, the advance came to a standstill in October and November 1941 due to the onset of the Muddy Period. Hitler tried to conquer Leningrad, which failed, and the following siege lasted 872 days from the 8th of September 1941 until the 27th of January 1942. 
The blockade became one of the longest and most destructive sieges in history, and it was possibly the costliest siege of all time due to the number of casualties which were suffered throughout its duration. As a result, the Wehrmacht lacked the strength to take Moscow, and a protracted war was imminent. In this situation, Paulus traveled to various sections on the front to assess the local situation. In November 1941, Friedrich Paulus became commander of the 6th Army, and afterward, in December, Walter von Reichenau, an avowed Nazi, became a commander of the Army Group South. Von Reichenau, while in command of the 6th Army during Operation Barbarossa in 1941, had issued the notorious Severity Order, which encouraged German soldiers to murder Jewish civilians on the Eastern Front. In addition, Reichenau's troops cooperated with the SS Einsatzgruppen in the commission of the massacre of over 33,000 Jews at Babi Yar, and assisted with other crimes against humanity that occurred in areas under his command. On the 28th of June, 1942, Army Group South began the German Army's summer offensive in southern Russia, known as the Fall Blau, or Case Blue Plan, which was supposed to deliver a final and devastating blow to the Soviet forces on the Eastern Front. The goals of the operation were to secure both the city of Stalingrad on the River Volga, so that it would cease to be of any use as an industrial or communications center, and the oil fields of Baku, Azerbaijan, which were some of the largest oil fields in the world, producing 80% of the Soviet Union's oil. This would enable the Germans not only to resupply their low fuel stock, but also deny their use to the Soviet Union, thereby bringing about the complete collapse of the Soviet war effort. After two months, on the 23rd of August, the 6th Army, led by Paulus, reached the outskirts of Stalingrad. On the same day, the city was firebombed with 1,000 tons of high explosives and incendiaries in 1,600 sorties, turning Stalingrad into a sea of fire and killing thousands of civilians and soldiers. Stalingrad was defended by the 62nd Army under the command of General Vasily Chuikov. Despite German air superiority over Stalingrad, and with more artillery pieces than the Red Army, German progress was reduced to no more than several meters a day. Paulus's troops fought Soviet forces defending Stalingrad for over three months, in an increasingly brutal urban warfare. The Germans called this unseen urban warfare Rattenkrieg, or Rat War, and busily joked about capturing the kitchen but still fighting for the living room and the bedroom. Buildings had to be cleared room by room through the bombed-out debris of residential areas, office blocks, basements, and apartment high-rises. On the 19th of November, 1942, the Soviet Red Army launched a massive counter-offensive, codenamed Operation Uranus. On the 22nd of November, the northern and southern Soviet forces linked up at the town of Kalach, encircling the entire Paulus army, which numbered more than 220,000 soldiers. Friedrich Paulus followed Adolf Hitler's orders to hold his positions in Stalingrad under all circumstances, despite the fact that he was completely surrounded by strong Soviet forces. At this point, regarding the capitulation, Paulus stated, As long as we keep on fighting, the Red Army has to remain here. We must hold them here to the last so that the Eastern Front can be stabilized. Only if that happens is there a chance of the war going well for Germany. Operation Winter Storm, a relief attempt, was launched in December 1942, but failed to break the Soviet encirclement of the German 6th Army. For the next two months, Paulus and his men fought on. However, the lack of food and ammunition, equipment losses, and the deteriorating physical condition of the German troops gradually wore down the German defense. With a new year, Hitler promoted Paulus to Colonel General. On the 7th of January, 1943, General Konstantin Rokossovsky, commander of the Red Army on the Don Front, called a ceasefire and offered Paulus's men generous terms of surrender. Normal rations, medical treatment for the ill and wounded, permission to retain their badges, decorations, uniforms, and personal effects. Paulus requested permission from Hitler to surrender. Even though it was obvious that the 6th Army was in an untenable position, the German Army High Command rejected Paulus's request, stating, Capitulation, out of the question. Every day that the army holds out longer helps the whole front and draws away the Russian divisions from it. After a heavy Soviet offensive overran the last emergency airstrip in Stalingrad on the 25th of January, the Soviets again offered Paulus a chance to surrender. Paulus radioed Hitler once again for permission, telling Hitler that the collapse was inevitable. Paulus stressed that his men were without ammunition or food, and he was no longer able to command them. He also said that 18,000 men were wounded, 
and were in immediate need of medical attention. Once again, Hitler rejected Paulus's request out of hand and ordered him to hold Stalingrad to the death. On the 30th of January, Paulus informed Hitler that his men were only hours from collapse. Hitler responded by promoting Paulus to field marshal. In deciding to promote him, Hitler noted that there was no known record of a Prussian or German field marshal ever having surrendered. Hitler implied that if Paulus allowed himself to be taken alive, he would shame Germany's military history. Although it looked like an invitation to commit suicide, Paulus would not do this favor for his Führer. Friedrich Paulus, a Roman Catholic, was opposed to suicide. During his captivity, Paulus said, I have no intention of shooting myself for this bohemian corporal, and he did not. After all the formalities had been settled, and the field marshal received guarantees for his personal safety, he was led out of the basement along with his staff officers. Paulus and his staff were captured on the morning of the 31st of January, 1943. The Sixth Army, regarded as the best field army in the Wehrmacht, surrendered between the 31st of January and the 2nd of February, 1943. German casualties were 147,200 killed and wounded, and over 91,000 captured, including 24 generals and 2,500 officers of lesser rank. At the time of surrender, the Red Army soldiers were well nourished, full of vigor, and dressed in fine winter uniforms. The German soldiers, ragged, in thin greatcoats over threadbare uniforms, as thin as skeletons, presented emaciated figures, exhausted half to death, with sunken features. Unwashed, with unkempt beards, they wore comical-looking makeshift snow boots and were wrapped in towels and women's headscarves. Weakened by disease, starvation, and lack of medical care during the encirclement, they were sent on foot marches to prisoner camps and later to labor camps all over the Soviet Union. Some 35,000 were eventually sent on transports, of which 17,000 did not survive. Most died of wounds, disease, particularly typhus, cold, overwork, mistreatment, and malnutrition. Some were kept in the city to help rebuild it. Only five to 6,000 would return to Germany after the war. In Germany, as well as abroad, Paulus' surrender was met with astonishment, since he had followed Hitler's orders unconditionally and to the last consequence. Shortly before his surrender, Friedrich Paulus sent his wedding ring back to his wife on the last plane departing his position. He had not seen her since 1942 and would not see her again. Following his surrender, Paulus' wife was sent to the Dachau concentration camp and his son was imprisoned in a fortress in Immenstadt. His son Friedrich died on the 29th of February, 1944, during the Italian campaign in the Battle of Anzio. The battle for the city of Stalingrad proved a decisive psychological turning point, ending a string of German victories in the summer of 1942 and beginning the long retreat westward. Germany proved unable to defeat the Soviet Union, which together with Great Britain and the United States, seized the initiative from Germany. After the victory at Stalingrad, the Soviet army remained on the offensive, liberating most of the Ukraine and virtually all of Russia and eastern Belarusia during 1943. Germany became embroiled in a long war, leading ultimately to its defeat in May 1945. Even though at first, Paulus refused to collaborate with the Soviets after the attempted assassination of Hitler on the 20th of July 1944, he became a vocal critic of the Nazi regime. While in Soviet captivity, he joined the Soviet-sponsored National Committee for a Free Germany, appealing to Germans to surrender. After the war, Paulus acted as a witness for the prosecution at the Nuremberg Trials and described the planning of the attack on the Soviet Union. During the Nuremberg Trials, one journalist asked him about the Stalingrad prisoners. Paulus told him to tell the wives and mothers that their husbands and sons were well. However, they were not. It was not until 1955 that the last of the five to 6,000 survivors were repatriated to West Germany after a plea to the Soviet Union by Konrad Adenauer, then Chancellor of Germany. Paulus's son, Ernst Alexander, and daughter Olga did survive the war. So did Paulus's wife, Constance Elena, who died in 1949 while he was still in captivity. In 1953, Two years before the repatriation of the remaining German prisoners of war, Paulus was released and allowed to move to the German Democratic Republic, a part of the Eastern Bloc in the Cold War. Some of his employees were informers at the Stasi, East Germany's secret police. His mail was checked, and the telephone and his Dresden villa where he lived were bugged. 
He was not assigned with any influential position, and spent his last years working as the civilian chief of the East German Military History Research Institute. Friedrich Paulus was 66 years old when he died in his Dresden villa on the 1st of February 1957, only a few months after he had been diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. He died 14 years and one day after his surrender at Stalingrad. As part of his last will and testament, his body was transported to Baden-Baden, West Germany, to be buried next to his wife. German Field Marshal Friedrich Paulus was the highest ranking German officer to surrender during World War II. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Please help us to create more videos by clicking on the donation link. Thank you and see you next time on the channel.